Hi FlossTube, it's Angie and I am back for video number five. This is probably the fourth or fifth time I've recorded this because it is daytime and my kids keep knocking on the door and interrupting me and I keep saying stupid stuff. <laughs> or at least stuff that I think is stupid. But anyway, I am really excited. I Today, I will have been floss tubing for the entire month of May, which is exciting because that went by really fast. And I swear, May, I blinked and it was gone, which is so funny because in April, I think April lasted about 10 years. That's the, that's the joke that I hear everywhere. April lasted 10 years and May is a blink of an eye. And it was, May was a blink of an eye. A lot, a lot going on, a lot going on with stitching, a lot going on just in general, but we are at the end and that's exciting. So when I started the floss tube, I just assumed that I would update once a week. So that's what I've been doing. Um, some of my favorite floss tubers update every other week or they update once a month. And I always wish for more, more often, but I get it. I get it. It's not, it's not easy to film. It's not easy to take the time out of, like, I, mean, I usually film at 10 or 11 at night when my kids are in bed so that I don't get interrupted. So I totally get why people don't film very often. I just know what, what I like. And so that's what I'm presenting. I personally like video updates more often. So once a week sounds great to me. I'm, I'm really grateful that I have the opportunity to do this kind of thing. I don't know what life will be like when my husband gets home. Uh, it may be harder to film more often. Maybe it'll be easy. Maybe he'll jump in and help me and we'll, we'll make it this like fancy thing. I don't know. He's good with computers. He's tech savvy. He's what I need to make all of this better. And he, he discovered my channel. He didn't discover it. I told him about it because I tell him everything, but I didn't tell him about it until I was four, or four episodes in because I don't know. I felt a little silly. It's like, yeah, honey, I'm, I'm posting videos on the internet about my hobby for everybody to look at. And I, I don't know. He watches YouTube, so I don't know why I felt silly. Maybe it's just because I'm a little self-conscious about my videos. But anyway, he, he found them. And he sent me this sweet little text that said, hey, I discovered this new YouTuber named Angie Stokes. You should check her out. And I think he might have said she's cute. Because <laughs> he's sweet. But the only problem with that is now he knows what his Christmas present is. So, boo. Now I have to change it. Luckily, I have a backup. And he doesn't get to know about it. <sighs> it's May. Stitch Mania is almost over. I'm a little bit sad about it and a little bit excited about it. I'm sad because I've done a lot of progress on projects that I probably wouldn't have worked very hard on without that. I don't want to say pressure because I don't feel I didn't feel any pressure, but that that plan in place, that exciting plan that I that I had set and that I could report on. And I really liked that. I, I enjoyed having a very set plan and schedule each day for what I was gonna do. And I and I stuck to it. I was, again, really proud of myself. The only thing I didn't do is start um, extra projects. I started the two, and then I decided to just keep continuing on working on those two instead of starting even more. Part of it is because I knew with the move coming up, I didn't know how many of these projects I was willing to bring with me to work on. I wanted to bring a couple so that if I'm not in the mood for one, I can work on another, but I didn't want to have a huge number that I had to make that decision for. If, I don't know, does that make any sense? It makes sense in my mind. I guess that's all that's, that's important, right? But anyway, Stitch Mania is almost over and I think I did a pretty good job. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and just get started on showing you what's what's going on with my stitch mania first i have two finishes and one you wouldn't even know about because 
I didn't tell you about it. It was a last minute decision to stitch it. I don't normally have a plan. I don't set up a, a schedule of how I'm gonna do this. I sort of just wing it. And maybe that's just because I don't know any better or maybe that's just because it's my personality. And if I have to set up a schedule of how I'm gonna do this, I'd probably drive myself crazy. But wait, no, I gotta do this and I gotta do that. So I just sort of wing it which means I'm not always completely organized, so I apologize. But uh, you all remember that I stitched the family tree with the birds for my friend who got married. And she got married last week and she looked beautiful and they got to do a little honeymoon and I was so excited for them and she seems very happy and they're home now so I can deliver a wedding present. But I decided to add something else. Uh, she and I, we go to the same church and one of the sayings in our church is uh, families are forever. And I just felt that I needed to add that in with her wedding birds gift. And I don't have it because it's wrapped up in the package with her. So I just have a picture and oh my goodness, look at this glare. Oh my goodness me. Yeah, sorry, you're gonna be seeing every mess in my room through this screen. That's unfortunate. Uh, let's see, there you go. Anyway, this is so sad. I should have just printed this picture out. But anyway, this was just a very simple stitch. It's probably about 300 back stitches. That's about all it is to make this little, oh my goodness, families are forever. I'm so sorry about the glare on this. I'm. That's all I can say. So anyway, I stitched that, framed it, just dropped it on the floor because that is, I'm just that awesome today. Anyway, so that was a finish. It took all of about three hours and a lot of floss tube in the background to accomplish. And it was great and I'm excited for her to have it. I made a bunch of those last year for Christmas for a bunch of friends and I just went and bought the little teeny tiny two dollar frames at Walmart and put them in there and it it's it's a simple gift and it's cute and it's easy and you know stitch one every time I watch a movie and I can get it done uh, the next one and I'll link the pattern below because I found it on Etsy it's a very simple pattern very inexpensive so the next finish I have is let's bake I got it done. I didn't, I wasn't sure. I'm going to be honest. I was a little bit nervous last week when I said I can probably have this finished by the next video, but I forgot how skinny this part was. So I did finish it and I finished it on floss or not on floss tube. I finished it on virtual stitchers with a few friends hanging around and I got, they, they gave me a bell and said, yay, congratulations. And you know, it's all about the bell. But with this one, you already know that I changed a couple colors. I added some darker grays and I added the yellow in here because if you believe it or not, all of this, except I think this word here, was red, all of it. And then this spoon was also red and it was filled with the words yum, 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 yum. And I didn't wanna add those words because I didn't think it looked good and I didn't want a red spoon. I thought, I almost made it brown but I didn't think because there was any other brown in here that would have worked. So I changed a few things. I made each of these little bottles a different color, but it is done and I can't wait. I'm not gonna bother framing it until after we move and closer to Christmas, I will go find the perfect frame for this pattern. If I were to ever stitch one of her patterns again, at least the words ones, I don't know about her other patterns because they're not all just words, I will not use Ada. Even though her, her pattern, the paper piece, calls for Ada, don't use Ada. There, I think in total, there were probably maybe 800 full cross stitches in this entire thing and over 8,000 backs or half stitches, back stitches, or fractional stitches. 
that's a lot. There was a lot of stabbing through the middle of my eta squares trying to get those fractionals in there, which would have been a non-existent problem if I'd just gone with linen, but I didn't look ahead. And I know I mentioned that before, but I just, I wanted to mention that again. If you don't like stabbing your ADA and trying to separate the little threads, just go with a linen. It will make this whole thing so much easier. Next up, let's move on to Harry Potter pillow sampler. I did not get a whole lot done in this and I have dog hair on it. <laughs> oh, someday there will be a cure, I'm sure for shedding dogs, right? So I didn't take it all the way off my key snap. So pardon the wrinkle strangeness. This is where I'm at with this one. I had started the flag next to Ron, but I finished getting that color in the flag done and then I worked on the Gryffindor flag a bunch. And it doesn't look like a whole lot, but that's a lot of stitches. I think I put 500 plus stitches in that just to get Gryffindor and the rest of the Hufflepuff flag going. The letters were especially difficult, but not because they are charted difficultly, not charted simply. What I'm trying to say is they're charted fine, but it was my own thoughtlessness that made them difficult. So I, I have Pattern Keeper on my Kindle and I love Pattern Keeper. I'm sure you've heard it a million times from a million other people. Pattern Keeper is the best, but not all designers are compatible with Pattern Keeper. Clouds Factory is one that has not gotten an agreement or whatever it is that they have to do to become compatible, but some of their patterns will still upload. Just because it's not compatible does not mean it won't upload into Pattern Keeper. So some of my Clouds Factory patterns work and some don't. Wacky Witches did not work. Epic Princess does not work, but all of my pillow samplers go in there just fine. So the problem came when I went to go work on the letters in the flags, when I noticed that the symbol for the color, for the black, there were two symbols next to it which at first I thought was a little bit odd, but then I thought there must be a reason for why there's two symbols next to this one color. And then when I go to stitch it, there would be a quarter stitch in the cream color and then a quarter stitch in what is supposed to be the black color. But in Pattern Keeper, it would highlight the symbol for the cream color as a black color. I don't know if any of that makes sense. But it confused me enough that I stitched it the way it showed up in Pattern Keeper, not thinking that possibly that was a mistake in Pattern Keeper because the pattern and the software don't mesh. So when the letters were looking really funky, I went ahead and printed out the page that had these on there and saw my mistake and realized that the, the way I was stitching it is not the way it is actually charted. So thankfully, these letters are small. I hadn't done any of the back stitching, just the, the main stitching. So I was able to take the letters out, redo them, fix them up. Once I did that, they were super easy. So now I know better. Next time, if something seems a little hinky, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it a little bit more before I just forge ahead. So that is the pillow sampler. The other pillow sampler that I am working on is the Star Trek. And I said it was all easy stitching, and it is, it's easy stitching, but it takes a long time because they're just a dense amount of stitches. Again, I've got dog hair because my dog was sitting on my bed. Anyway, so here is where I'm at. Last time, I changed it off of its scroll frame because I wasn't getting the tension on the scroll frame that I needed. And so right here, it was just super floppy and it was frustrating. So I just pulled it off the scroll frame and put it in a freed up Q-snap. But I had just done the outline here. And so I finished all this and this, added a couple of the little doohickeys there, got this ship done. I have a few more little doohickeys 
then I need to add those little lines that connect everything. And then I've got some words and just a few more. I've got probably three or four more large items like this and then the rest are these things. Pattern Keeper says I'm about 60, no, I'm about 70% done with this. So I don't mind if I put this away for just a little bit. I can, I can put it away and be more than confident that it will be ready by Christmas. I probably won't because I'm so close to finishing it, I might as well just keep going and finish it, right? The Harry Potter, I need to work on more. The flags are the hardest part with the Harry Potter one because they're just, they're very dense in the stitches. So those are the last of the gifts that I am making for Christmas that I need to finish. And I mean, I still have six months because it's not even June yet. So I think I'm good, I think I'm good. I did not start anything new last weekend. I could have, but I opted not to, which I explained earlier. So I pulled out my Pavan and worked on Pavan a little bit. And I still love this. And I, oh, this is a really pretty pattern. Right now I'm struggling because I worked so hard to get the variegation to go where I wanted it to. <laughs> Then now that's all I think about, which is the trap I did not want to get into. I just wanted to feel just stitch, but I want it to look, I don't know. I don't know. I just need to ignore that, I think. And I need to fix this little thread in the back. Anyway, this is where I got with Pavan, which is not bad. Again, I didn't get a... When I started stitching this, I just had all of this. I, I did so much on it. But uh, realistically, being able to stitch that much on a project is not sustainable because again, I'm a mom. I've got things I've gotta do. I've got a very busy life, especially right now. So getting large, large quantities of stitches in is not feasible. But I did get about a thousand, I think, over the course of Saturday and Sunday. And I love this and I still turn your face to the sun and the shadows fall behind you is definitely a mantra I should I should have this hanging on my wall to look at every day so that I, I remember things can be okay <laughs> life might be stressful but it's okay just look towards the sun you're good you're good <laughs> anyway so I am very happy with this and then Last night, on a whim, I decided to pull out Stargazer and see if I could get a couple more stitches in her. I was gonna work on her this weekend anyway, so I just started a little bit early on Friday night. I didn't get much, I think I only put about 300 stitches in her last night. So here's where she's at now. Um, last week, I was, so this over is what I've added. So not a whole lot, but I mean, it's still progress. So I think my goal for this weekend is to try to get this. So Stargazer is in four pages. There's this page, this page, and then the dress in the bottom is split into two pages. So this minus some beading and the stars that come up here is all one page that I've completed the main stitching on. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do this week is get the rest of this, which is mainly just a little bit of the back of her dress and her head and hair. Um, and then, and then the big, the big stuff happens because her dress is pretty big on the bottom. So that will take me a while, but she's actually stitching up quite a bit faster than I was expecting. I thought, you know, the way everybody talks about Mirabilia's and then how, and I'm, I'm sure it's dependent upon the pattern, but she's stitching up really quickly. I have, I would be surprised if I didn't have her finished before the end of this year. Um, depending of course on how often I work on her, but I just got all of the beads for her as well in the mail this week, which I will show you, but I have um, some other stuff that's on its way that I wanted to make sure I had before I opened it all up for you. But I, I still think she's beautiful. I love her on this fabric. I didn't get a whole lot done yesterday, but I'm gonna work on her tonight when I'm settling in and I'll work on her some more tomorrow and hopefully by next week, you will see a completed page on this side, minus of course the 
beady stuff up at the top. <laughs> I normally film at night so that I don't have that happen. My kids aren't coming in and interrupting me, but it's first thing in the morning and not first thing in the morning, but it's close enough. Um, and so now, of course, I'm gonna get knocks on my door. That's fine. I'm not the only one with kids out there. So that is the progress I've made on the Stitch Mania projects that I have going. And it feels like this video is super short, but that's because I finished, I mean, if you think about it, I finished three projects for Stitch Mania. That's not bad, especially because only one of them was small. Okay, so Wedding Birds was almost finished when Stitch Mania started, so I mean, technically, I could call, <laughs> that was kind of a gimme. I think I only had 100 or 200 stitches left in it. But I finished it during the month of May, <laughs> and it was a gift, so it's a Stitch Mania finish. I'm counting it. But the rest, the rest of them, I think I made a really good dent in, so I'm excited about that. I can't wait for Mania next year, but then there's so many other things to look forward to and probably a bunch of them that I don't even know about yet, but I know, what is it? Everybody calls it Jolly July or something like that, where it's Christmas in July, so you stitch on your Christmas stuff. <laughs> okay, yes, sign me up. Uh, Flossmas around Christmas time. Okay, sign me up for that too. Anything else? I'm, I'm, I'm game, so as long as I hear about it, I'll probably join in. And I definitely cannot wait for another 24 hours of Chris, uh, 24 hours of cross stitch. I told my husband when he gets home that the next time one of those comes up, he's in charge of making sure the house doesn't burn down because I'm gonna disappear and do 24 hours of cross stitch because I couldn't do it last time because I had to be an adult. I don't wanna be an adult sometimes. So this week I, won a prize. I was I was not expecting it and I was excited about it. Uh, if you watch any Floss Tube at all, then you are probably aware or you've probably heard that the company Tilt and Crafts has been struggling due to all of the all of the craziness in the world. And so a lot of a lot of stitchers have been um, encouraging people to go to their site and buy a pattern. Uh, one lady in one of my Facebook groups got on and said that she was going to buy two patterns for two people in our group. All we had to do was put our name down and tell her which pattern on that site that we liked. Um, why not, you know? You don't win if you don't enter, so sounds good. Tilt and Crafts, just so you know, is kind of like a heaven and earth design as far as their patterns. They have very detailed highly detailed patterns that are usually full coverage and usually big. So it's not one that I'd ever heard about, so I went and I perused their site and there were a lot of really nice things on there. I'm a little bit leery of getting full coverage because I've kind of enjoyed these smaller pieces that finish faster, but at the same time, I really need to, you know, I've got my Middle Earth, that's full coverage, my Northern Lights, which I, I have made a decision on, I'm gonna start it over on some smaller Ada and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start over on it because it's it's messed up the way it is anyway. The fabric it's on is messed up, so I'm just gonna start it over. I just don't know when I'll do that. But anyway, back to the, the giveaway. I went ahead and looked through there and I found a couple patterns that I liked and I wrote them down and I said, hey, and I won, I won. She messaged me and said, hey, you're a winner. And, and it did, and it came in my email the next day. And so the pattern I won is Little Nightmare Before Christmas by Tilton Crafts. And this baby is big. This is a 300 by 300 stitch. Uh, stitch count, it's, it's gonna be big. So funny enough, I just happen to have all of the flosses and I happen to have some fabric that will fit this. So I could start this now if I wanted. I'm probably not gonna start it now. I'm probably gonna wait until maybe Halloween time or close to just, just for fun. But I won and I'm so excited. And so I've got it, I've got it all set up. It's on my, it's in my pattern keeper because Tilt and Crafts, much like Heaven and Earth Designs, are compatible. 
with Pattern Keeper. And when I un when I loaded it on, it even said, this looks like a Tilton Crafts pattern. And it just loaded it on there. It didn't even ask me for um, an overlap for the pages. Okay. So I won that, which makes me super happy. I, I enter a lot of giveaways because again, why not? Why not? Um, I never expect to win because everybody is entering. So, but it does, it's fun to enter. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick, quick rundown of the, I spent a lot of time this week watching Tube when I was not sleeping at night because I don't sleep well right now. It's a little bit stress related. But um, I of course watch a lot of Michelle Bendy Stitchy. I love Christine at Stitch All The Things. I've mentioned her before. Caroline at Off The Grid Needlework, Needle Arts. I'm always gonna mess up the names, I just know, because I always call her Caroline Off The Grid. That's all, I don't, I don't finish the name. Um, she probably doesn't know. I, I comment on her videos occasionally but she does a daily craft chat, basically. Just anywhere from, you know, five to 20 minutes of a just quick check-in, and she's super sweet, and I love to watch her videos. Her voice is very calm, and it's just very soothing. It's very relaxing. So I love her. Uh, Stitching Jewels, if you have not watched her videos, they are fun, they are fun. That woman has so many full coverage projects, and they are huge. They are massive. They are the kind of projects that I look at and I think you will never finish those in this lifetime because they are that big. But she just keeps trucking away at them and she makes decent progress and and she's fun. She's fun and she also makes a list of all of the floss tubers that are on YouTube. So if you're ever curious about floss tubers you've never seen before or whatever, she has a list of them on there, which is a fantastic. Thing. I think that's great and you can go in and discover new people that you've never seen before. I discovered, I didn't discover, I watched Steel City Stitchers previously and I liked their energy and then I forgot to subscribe to their channel and so I didn't see them again for a while and then I found them this last weekend and I binge watched quite a few of their episodes because they're just fun. They're just a lot of fun. They're funny and I love, I love their patterns because one of them is obsessed with horror movies and so all of her patterns are creepy scary, which is kind of up my alley. Not a big horror movie, like slash them, cut them up, blood and guts and gore, but I am very much into scary. I like to be scared. I like the chills. I like bone tingling, much to the chagrin of my husband because then when I have a nightmare or I'm scared at night, I'm like, honey. <laughs> oh, maybe he likes it because I grip him but he's, he's not a scary movie fan, but I am, big time. That's now they're here, yeah, anyway. And then I've heard of Priscilla and Chelsea, the housewives of, what is it, the cross -stitch, housewives of cross-stitching, something like that. I've heard of them, I hear about them all the time on FlossTube. I just never stopped to watch their videos, and I did the other day, and I will admit it was fun and it sucked me in it, it's high energy. I think that's that's one way. It's very high energy. And there's nothing wrong with high energy. I like that. And it, it's exciting. So depending on the day, my mood, I'm either going to watch Caroline so that I can be soothed or I'm going to watch <laughs> Priscilla and Chelsea so I can be amped up <laughs> and ready to go. These ones just happen to be the ones that pop up in my feed most often because I watch them most often. But I'm always discovering new ones. Uh, Sarah from Our Stitching Kingdom, she's a new one that I recently discovered because of Virtual Stitchers. I'd been chatting with her on Virtual Stitchers for a few weeks at least before I discovered she had a floss tube channel, so I went and checked it out. And it's fun, and I liked it, and it's nice to see somebody that you chat with doing their thing. Um, and then this last week, she she gave me a shout out, which was super sweet. I wasn't expecting it, but she said I was fun. <laughs> I think, no, I think she said I was funny, which I don't usually use that, that word to describe myself. So, because <laughs> I don't think I'm funny. Okay, no, I think I'm funny. Other people probably don't. <laughs> anyway, so thank you, Sarah, for the shout out. That was super sweet. I love it. Um, but 
the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of these floss tubers that I've mentioned, there's um, Aaron from Two Martini Stitcher, there's, um, oh, and see now I don't remember her name, but I've got a link to it from Stitching uh, in Sequins, uh, Michelle Bendy. They have gotten together and put together a, a floss tube about a big fundraiser coming up, and I'm gonna link to the floss tube below so that you can watch it yourself, but I'm just gonna give you some of the pertinent information. But they are teaming up with Cleveland Clinic and their Velisano. So Velisano, with a V, because I kept thinking they said Velisano, but it's with a V. Uh, Velisano is a yearly fundraiser. They've been doing it for about seven years where cyclists will get, um, get sponsored by people for how many miles they ride. And I believe they try to ride a century, which is 100 miles. And all of the money will go to cancer research. So the big thing right now is that Velisano cannot do the regular ride because of everything that's going on, so they're doing a virtual one. And a bunch of the floss tubers got together with um, uh, Alicia from the Cleveland Clinic to do a stitchy version of the Velisano. And so just so you know, one, so the point that they're gonna do is that they're going to make a goal. They're either going to say, hey, I'm gonna stitch a century, which means stitch for 100 hours, or I'm gonna do this many stitches, or I'm gonna do, they're gonna come up with something that they are going to do, and then they are going to ask people to, um, what is it, sponsor, where they bid on them and say, hey, I'm gonna give you a dollar for every hour you stitch or 50 cents for every hour you stitch, or this, that, or the other. And they're going to sign that, sign up, and 100% of all of the funds raised for this go to cancer research. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think I know anybody who has not been somewhat affected by cancer. Cancer is such a prevalent problem, and while so many people can recover from it, so many people do not. Two years ago, I lost a friend to cancer. Uh, she passed away in April and left behind three beautiful children and it was heartbreaking and I have another friend who at the same time was diagnosed with stage 4 metastatic breast cancer which she will live with for the rest of her life because you can't cure that I have family members who are dealing with incurable cancer and it's it's heartbreaking it's, it's awful, cancer, cancer sucks. I mean, to be blunt about it, it does. And so anything that I can do to help out in getting funds raised for research for this awful disease, I am all about that. I am trying to decide which, which way I'm gonna go. Am I gonna join the cycling side? Because that is something that I do enjoy. I discovered that right after my husband left. I joined our town's local gigantic cycling event, the Hotter Than Hell 100. It sounds terrible and it, it's brutal, but I didn't do the full 100 because pff, no way. I did 50 miles. I rode 50 miles in it and it was exhilarating and intense and scary. And for a brief moment, I didn't know if I'd actually get to finish because it was hot and my legs were cramping, but I did and it was amazing and I am so proud of it. So I definitely want to do more cycling events, but I also want to do the stitchy side of it because I don't know if my bike will be there because I don't know if I'll have all my household goods yet, but I don't know. But at some point I'm definitely gonna sign up for it. So I'm going to link everything below. I'm gonna link the Instagram to Alicia and her email, which she gave out so that you, if you have any questions, you can ask her. And there's also the website so that you can join or donate. <clears throat> and I will link the video that Michelle put together. I don't know if Michelle put it together, but Michelle's on it, and so that's why I said it. But the four, the four ladies put this video together and put it on each of their Floss Tube accounts. So if you are at all interested in this event, please, please, please go look at it. This is an amazing cause. Cancer is, is so prevalent. Please go out and see what you can do to help. <clears throat> All right, I think that's it. I think that's everything that I have for you today. I'm sorry, I feel like I was really disorganized. Not a lot of projects and a lot of talking, but, but we shall see.
see. I, I Now that Mania is over, I'm free to work on any of the projects that I want to whenever I want. I was free to do that before, but now I'm actually gonna feel like I'm allowed to <laughs> because I'm not gonna be so rigid. So you might see some of these still, but you might see some other ones that I've just missed working on. Maybe you'll see something new. I don't know. I play it by ear. I don't have a plan now. Uh, that is it for me. So thank you for coming. Thank you to all of the amazing new subscribers that I have gotten. I am so grateful again for the comments. If I have not responded or liked your comment yet, don't worry. It's just because I have not gone to my computer. I don't like doing comments on my phone. I like being on my computer where I can actually type fast. I am not, I'm not fast with my thumbs. So I don't get on my computer very often right now because it's out where the kids are and the kids are noisy. But um, I do try to make sure that every comment gets a like or a reply because that's just fun and polite. It's polite to reply. And so thank you so much for leaving a comment. If you like what you see, please, please feel free to subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. Um, I look forward to reading them and I will see you guys again next week. So have a good one and see you later.